Hello and welcome. In this week's video, I'm sharing how I made this castle cake. I'll also pop a tutorial on how to make the unicorn, just in case you want to add that too. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, then please do hit that button and turn on all notifications so you never miss a video. For this particular cake, I've baked two six inch cakes, a three inch cake, and a slab of what you probably know as Rice Krispie Squares. So I've got my six inch and it's layered, filled and coated in buttercream and it's sitting on a 12 inch board. If you need any help getting to this point, I'll link my video above on how to do this. As you can see, I've placed my cake just off center and this is so that I've got space to add my turret to the side and then the other one will go on top. So while my cakes were chilling, I prepared some of the fondant pieces that I wanted to harden up before I added them to the cakes. Firstly, I made some of these little fondant rocks, which I absolutely love making. I actually have a tutorial for these, which I'll link above. Next, I used the fondant letter cutters to press out the name and the age. If you have problems using these, I'll link the video on using these too, as they can be quite tricky at first. I'm also making a few flowers to pop around the bottom. I've got two different flower cutters. This one is a plunger cutter that once you've cut out your flower, you can push it out and just a regular cutter. To dry the flowers, I have this foam mat with lots of little dimples in it, and this will keep them slightly curved and also dry a little bit faster. I won't need too many flowers, so about 10 of each should be good. The final pieces that I'm making are the flags. You definitely need quite a bit of Tylose or CMC powder in the fondant as these really need to dry hard. I'm just cutting two strips from the fondant and using a cocktail stick I'm going to wet it and place it in the centre and then fold over the fondant on top. To cut an even triangle out of the end, I first make a small cut in the centre and then I cut from this point to the corner on each side. I'm taking two cake pop sticks and I'm just going to lay my flag on top and push down gently. That way it will set with a little wave in it. Now all the pieces are made, let's get back to the main cake. Give your fondant a really good knead and then roll out a piece just large enough to cover the top of the first cake. I'm just wetting the top with a little water to allow it to stick down and then place the fondant on top. Smooth it out with a fondant smoother and then cut away the excess. So I've picked out a few embossers from my collection to add some texture to my fondant. The first is one that I think is used for leather, but I'm actually going to use it for my path to look like lots of little pebbles. The next one is a brick wall one and I also have a cobblestone one. Now I really like the look of this one, but I did notice that it has quite high ridges around the edge, which will emboss on the fondant, and it's going to be really difficult to line it up. So I'm going to use the brick one, which has no lip and will join up perfectly. I've rolled out some fondant and I've cut it down so it's just a little taller than my cake and long enough to wrap all the way around. Taking my embosser, I'm going to line it up with the bottom edge and press down. Now you don't want to press too hard or it will go all the way through, but you want it just enough to leave an imprint. You could always practice on some spare fondant first. I'm going to go ahead and emboss the whole piece and then to transfer it to the cake, I'm taking a small rolling pin and gently rolling it up. Now I can simply unroll it, just making sure that the bottom is flat against the base of the cake. Trim away any excess from the back and blend together. A great tip is to add your seam where your turret will sit and then you won't see it at all. I'm then just using my fondant smoother to help me trim the excess from the top and then I'm going to carefully smooth it out to fully adhere it to the cake. Don't rub it too hard though or it will take away the brick effect. I'm going to cover my two turrets in exactly the same way. To make the larger one, I cut rounds from a sheet of marshmallow rice treats and then push them together. They are quite sticky, so you shouldn't need anything extra to get them to stay. I also gave this a crumb coat just to smooth the edges so that it doesn't show through the fondant. As before, I'm covering the top and then embossing a larger piece of fondant to cover the sides. Just make sure that the brick pattern is the right way up on your turrets. 
For the smaller one, I stacked and filled it on a cake board with a hole in the centre, and this will just allow me to add in some supports to keep it safely in place. Before I put this all together, I'm going to cover my board. The easiest way I found to do this is to roll out my fondant and then curve it into a U shape. I then roll it wide enough to cover the board and then lengthen it out by rolling this way. To get a nice clean edge, cut around the U shape on the inside and then you can use this to go up against the cake. Wet the board with a little water and carefully transfer the fondant, wrapping it around as you go. I'm putting a pathway on my board, so I'm going to start and finish at the front of my cake. That way you won't have any seams anywhere else. Then I'm going to trim away the excess and then cut out that front section. To fill out that front area, I'm rolling out a small piece of grey fondant and then using that leather texture embosser, I'm going to create my pebbled pathway. You can actually feel where the fondant is underneath, so it's quite easy to cut away the extra and fill that gap. The joins will be covered anyway, so don't worry if it's not perfect. To make the conical roofs on top of the turrets, I'm using waffle cones as my base. These are a little lopsided, so I'm trying my best to even them out. Unfortunately, waffle cones just shatter when you try and cut them, so it did take a few attempts. I would definitely suggest the wafer cones if you're doing this at home. This is the best I can do for now, and it's going to be covered anyway, so let's move on. To give them a tiled effect, I'm cutting strips from my fondant and on each strip I'm cutting halfway up in even spaces like so. Using a little water on the top at the back, I'm going to wrap it around the cone and then keep repeating moving up a little bit each time so that the next one overlaps the one below. At the very top, I just take a small piece and wrap it on itself and then secure it in place. Before I add these to my turrets, I'm going to make the battlements. So I already had a cutter that gives the perfect look, but if you don't have one, you could cut them out with a knife or even use a square cutter to remove sections along the fondant. To stick everything together, I've made up a very basic glue from icing sugar and water, which is not too thick, but also a little runny like so. I'm putting a pretty generous amount on and then placing the cone on top so it doesn't move or fall off. Then, with a little water, I can wrap around the other fondant piece to complete my turret. I've done the same on my other tower and I've also added the battlements to the main cake too. I'm adding in some supports to hold the smaller cake on top of the larger one. Even though it's pretty small, I have to travel with it so I don't want any accidents en route. I've got a wooden dowel going into my main cake that sticks out and I'm also adding two straws which are cut level with the cake. These will help support the weight. I'm adding on some of that sugar glue and then feeding the dowel through the hole in the cake board and into the cake. To attach the large one, I'm adding sugar glue to the base and the side of the cake, making sure that the two seams are touching so that you don't see either of them. For the door, I'm rolling a small piece of fondant and trimming it as wide as the path. For the top, I'm using a circular cutter and carefully just using one side to create the curve. With my knife, I'm scoring a line in the middle and then using this fondant tool, I'm thickening it up and then using the thinner end to add scores along to look like a wood effect. I'm then just using a little bit of water to secure it in place. I've also cut out two little windows to go on my turrets. To outline my window and door, I have this pearl bead mould and I'm going to use the larger one around the door and then the smaller one around the windows. To finish off my cake, I'm now going to add all my fondant pieces. I'm going to add a little bit of water to either side of the path and then place my rocks down either side. To add a bit more texture to my cake, I've got some green buttercream and I've got it in a piping bag with a grass tip and I'm going to pipe all the way around the outside of my castle and also add little tufts here and there. The grass also gives a really good place for the flowers to stick to, so I'm just going to arrange them over the bottom of the cake. The flags have fully hardened and as you can see they've got that lovely wave in them and I can push them straight into the top of the turrets into the waffle cones. It might be a little bit tricky and this is where the wafer ones will probably come in better use. 
Finally, I'm adding the personalised name and age to the cake. As you can see, I've popped the two on top of the door, but I actually moved it down to the pathway as I thought it looked a little bit better here. Don't forget to add some ribbon to your cake board. I used some lovely gold and then your cake is complete. You can add anything you like to your cake or you could leave it as it is. I made this adorable unicorn model and secured it to the top. If you'd like to see how I made it, I'll post it in a separate video. If you've managed to make it all the way through the tutorial, thank you so much for watching and do check out my channel for more cake decorating videos.